Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and when I watched the most recent Nintendo Direct, I immediately knew what my favorite part was. Uh? Goomba looks so sorry. Well then. Now of course the first step in making any big bellied Goomba punting Elifa Mario will be making a big ball of aluminium then covering that in a layer of clay. Then you take that soft, malleable gray ball of Elifa Mario belly and bake it in the oven until you've got a nice, firm, mostly round gray egg. Now with a solid round lump, I can drill a couple of holes in one side and stick some thick leg lengths of armature wire which will then get covered in their own thick layer of clay. I'm going to be making my big gray Mario freestanding so I need to make sure his legs are strong enough to support his weight without any obvious attachments to the base so I'll make sure that his thighs are appropriately thundery. Once they're looking thick enough to win the Tour de France, I can smooth the surface out then press them firmly down into my inverted baking tray which will give me a nice flat base. I can then poke a set of three toe holes into the bottom of his foot before filling each of those holes with a little white toe ball and building up the surrounding clay to highlight his cankles. Then a bit of detail work to push his cuticles back and some quick and dirty line work will add some much needed ankle roll. With that done, my legs are done and it's into the oven for a quick bake to lock the body in place so I can get to work making his clothes. I'll start by making the red of his shirt first since this will allow me to build his trousers on top later. Once I've covered the top half of this grey bipedal egg in a thin red skin, I'll roll out a thick worm of red clay that gets chopped in two and turned into a chunky red sleeve that can get slapped onto the side of the shirt and blended in. I'll be sure to leave the sleeve shorter than normal since I want to poke some divots into the end so I can fit some short lengths of my grey elephant clay into the tips of the sleeves. These grey lumps will eventually get covered by Elifa Mario's trademark white gloves later, but for now I can get started making his bright blue overalls. I'll start with an extra thin sheet of blue clay that gets wrapped around his waist like a towel and blended in the back. Then I can add a couple bits of blue to his upper back and chest as well as wrap some thin strips around his legs to finish making the pant part of this one piece suit. Once all the exposed bits have been covered and it's been nicely blended together and smoothed out, I can refine the edge and start to add the stitching and detail. Finally, before I add any texture, I want to add the shoulder straps, blend them into the back, then give them a little bit of stitching as well. As for that aforementioned texture, I'll add that by pressing this strip of curtain fabric into the clay, which will leave me with a very light, barely noticeable blue jean texture. This step, of course, is entirely optional since when I did it, I pressed it in so gently that I can't even see it in the end. Finally, before I bake it all, a couple little balls of yellow clay will make my buttons. Then it's into the oven to cure it before getting to work making my head. Much like Elifa Mario's belly, this will start as a lump of aluminium wrapped in grey clay and to build out the cheeks, I'll stick a couple balls onto the bottom side and blend them in until I've got a grey heart-shaped hiney. I'll then poke a couple divots into the front so I can fit a pair of pre-baked eyeballs making it look a little less like a butt and a little more like a pair of gonads with eyeballs or like something else. A couple strategically placed tiny sausages will help to puff up his cheeks then I can slap his ears in place along the sides of his head and blend them in then add the little top part to finish them off. Some final smoothing will hide the seams and I can set the head aside and get to work making the mustache. Like all mustaches it starts as a tiny brown turd of clay that gets pinched and pulled into an upward curve then with some flat silicone shapers I can poke and prod the curve to make some smaller curves on top of the bigger curve. I can then gently press this onto my elephant face so I can figure out where his mouth would be before removing the mustache and adding some lips. This is also the first time I've ever seen an elephant without a trunk and I don't think I like it. With the mouth finished I can reattach his flavor saver and add a little bit of hair texture before using a tiny cookie cutter to remove a section into which I'll shortly fit my trunk. Before that though I'll add some little caterpillar eyebrows. To make the trunk, I'll roll a ball of grey clay into a slightly tapered grey sausage, pinch the tip into a triangle, then poke some holes to give me an extra long pig snout. I can then bend this into my final shape, add a bit of wrinkling around the bends, then press it into place into that aforementioned cookie cutter mustache gap. 
A quick dry fit will make sure my head fits the body and I can bake them together before moving on to the final details. To make Elifamario's hat, I'll squish this little ball of red clay into the shape of a hat, then press it into place on the top of his head since that's generally where hats go. A little poking and prodding with a rounded part of my sculpting tools will add some folds and creases to the center of the hat, then I can add the rim and a little not quite fully circular circle to the center for a future M logo, and that's my traditional plumber's hat finished, which means the only thing left to do is make some fancy white gloves. To make my white gloves, I'll start with a ball of white clay, then squish it into a slightly hand-shaped lump into which I can carve some fake fingers. I'll then carve a couple straight lines across the underside so I can bend the fingers over into a fist. Once in a fist, I can refine the shape of the fingers and flatten them so they look a little less rounded before adding a thumb and pressing it all onto the exposed gray arm nub. A final wormy dealy wrapped around the wrist will clean up the edges of the glove and I can add the final details which are the little trifecta of white pills attached between the glove's knuckles. Then I can repeat these steps for the other hand and attach my head and that's the majority of Elephant Mario finished. Now, I feel like I need to address the elephant in the room. I thought by angling the arms like this it would look like he's swinging them happily to and fro as he trundled through the grasses, but now that he's mostly finished it kinda just looks like he's seconds away from sucker punching me. Which is appropriate, since an elephant never forgets, and it never forgives. Otherwise, that's really it for the sculpting, which means it's time to add a little bit of paint. Now, the beauty of sculpting in colored clay is that the majority of the base coats are already done, and all I need to do is add some sheeting and highlighting, which is decidedly more enjoyable. I'll recoat all the grays with a slightly lighter gray top coat, followed by a series of haphazardly slapped on lighter and lighter grays until I've got a good from far, but far from good gray gradient. I'll then recoat his little red hat with a redder red, then redo the red with a light red or a pink if you'd prefer to make the fabric look a little more worn. Then the blues get some blues to first bring the vibrancy up, then I'll immediately knock that vibrancy down by aggressively dry brushing some less vibrant blues over top until I've got a very light but still definitely blue, worn blue jean look. The red of the shirt gets the same red to pink attention that the hat got, then the gloves will get a white top coat and... That's it, since I want them to just be straight up white. Of course, while I've got the white on my brush, I'll brush the toes until they no longer look like he kicked a Goomba to death. Then I can get back to the head and paint the mustache and eyebrows nearly black, followed by a not-so-black brown before giving the majority of the ears a pink to pale flesh tone gradient. The tip of the trunk gets a couple coats of pink to make it stand out, then I'll repaint the whites of the hat and the eyes white before giving my eyes a quick once over until I've got a pair of beautiful blues ready for a top coating of UV resin to finish them off. Finally, with everything else finished, I can sketch a little red M in place on his hat, and that's the details added, and I can glue his head to his body, and that's us finished. However, while I figured that would be enough, it felt like he could use a base, so let's knock something up nice and quick. To make the base, I made a little platform out of a couple layers of cardboard taped together and covered in a thin sheet of brown clay. I'll then cut off the excess so I'm left with a deviously delicious looking cursed fondant cake that I'll then cover in a shorter layer of grassy green. Now I want a bit of the brown exposed beneath, so I'll cut the grassy green slightly shorter, then add a bit of less boring texture by taking my ball styluses and practicing my paradiddles. I've rolled a bunch of randomly sized balls of green clay that I'll then smoosh around the edge of the grassy block, then blend flat along the top to create that sort of blocky, grassy overhang that you see in the trailer. I can then press Elifa Mario into place to indent the clay, then since I felt it was a little flat, I added a handful of pre-baked blades of grass. Finally, with those in place, it's time to go into the oven to bake before a couple coats of lighter greens to add some shading. Now, we're just over 10 minutes into the video at this point, and I'm assuming the comment section is full of people pointing out that I forgot to give him a tail. Well, I didn't forget, I just decided to wait until the very end to add it, since I think that adds a little bit of excitement to what could be an otherwise very expected chain of events. Now, you might say I like to live life on the edge, but like the kids say, you only YOLO once. Now, with my tail made out of a tiny bit of gray clay, I can paint the tip with a black dry brushing to add some flair, then I can stick it into the freshly made tail hole, and since it's made out of cosplay, I can safely bend it into a bit of a more dynamic shape. 
Otherwise, I can glue Elifamaru in place on his little pedestal, and that's us done, and on to the glamour shots. As always, a huge thank you to the wonderful enablers over on Patreon and a special shout out to my newest enablers, Destiny Awaits, Melissa Alt, Kara, Timothy Rochette, Andrew Lazenby, Terranator, Breadgirl92, Starman Solar, Terry Jr., The Octoskull, and Fighter. You are the big grey elephant feet that this channel uses to punt Goombas into the stratosphere. I hope you like this video since the acknowledgement of total strangers on the internet plays way too big a part in my life and has a far too great effect on my mental health. So make sure you video this comment and like that smash. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>